Okay, let's jump into the succession calendar and take a look at the different successions. So we've got bed one here, that's celery, we're going to jump into that, but you can see in the bottom here I've got this done for each specific crop. So jump into celery, that's bed one, and you've got succession one here, succession two, succession three. Then you've got groupings. So each succession is going to take up 22 feet of bed space. My beds are 66 feet beds. So if you take that divided by three, which are the number of successions, then you get 22 feet of bed. So each group represents 22 feet of that bed. Okay, so let's check out the first succession here. So I break these dates based on weeks here. So to take up that entire 22 feet of bed full of celery, if the celery is spaced apart 10 inches, three row, 10 inches. So that's why it's important to figure out your, your, your spacing both in row and then how far apart you want to space your crop. So March 9th, I'm gonna be sowing celery seeds. Those will go in the, the field on April 13th, that week of April 13th. And I need to sow the second set on May 25th to have those ready for the field once I pull that celery. You get it? So basically that 22 feet of bed, I'm going to harvest the celery, let's say June 22nd, and I need to have more celery ready, ready to plant in its place. So I sowed that second group of celery on May 25th, knowing that it was going to take a, a, a period of time for those seeds to sit in the greenhouse, mature to the point where I could then move them in the field. So before I'm even harvesting that crop, I've got another set of those celery plants in the greenhouse growing, ready to go for that first succession. So it's a little, it can be confusing because you're, you're succession planting, but then you're grouping within those successions. So uh, that's succession two. Then we go down here to succession three, August 10th. I need to sow celery seeds. They need to sit in the greenhouse until the second or third week of September. And then I, and then when group two, I harvest group two, I've got group three ready to go in the field. So we're never skipping a beat here. We've got crops coming off each succession. So I've got three successions. I've got my first 22 feet, my second 22 feet, my third 22 feet, and then I have groups within those successions. So I hope you understand this. This was something that took me a long time to put together here, but it has really helped us in figuring out the different successions and keeping us on track. You know, the worst thing is time. Time stresses people out. And plants can't just grow at the, the flip of a switch. They need time to grow. So it's important to have these successions laid out on a calendar before you start your season so you're never missing a planting date. So you can see it's all about the small details making a big difference. You can see the level of detail we went into on our succession calendar. You don't have to go into this level of detail. I know a lot of farmers, they just wean it. But, you know, we want to be prepared. We wanted to know what we were getting ourselves into. And we want to improve on this every year. So we've got everything laid out here in this Excel. And it's very easy for us to just go in and make adjustments as the years go on. 
Good morning. So, last night I was up and I was editing the first part of this video, which is me inside going through the succession calendar and talking about how you want to plan your succession so you don't have any gaps in your growing season. The minute you start to have gaps in your growing season, you start to show up to market with inconsistent items, not having the same item every week when people come for that item can be a problem. So I figured we'd come outside today and I'd show you this morning. Row covers are off. We're doing some watering today, so I figured I'd show you some of our successions, how we've crop planned for successions and how they've been working out so far this season. We've only been at this a month. We've been doing markets for about a month now. We're probably past our first succession. And I figure, well, why not just take them outside and show them some of these successions and show them how we're doing things. So I'm going to jump around now and kind of talk about some of the different successions and how those successions have been going for us so far. Building these beds, it's a lot of work because we can't just take a shovel, dig a hole, and plant a plant, and it's not that simple here because the floor I'm standing on here is an old riverbed. So you get about six inches under, and it's just straight rock, <laughs> which is probably a good thing because riverbeds, you know, they contain the most minerals and vitamins and so the plants are getting some good stuff once their roots get down that low but makes it very difficult to plan a garden around digging down and working that soil there's not a whole lot of soil so we've been bringing in our own soil and how we've been doing that is we've been taking the forest floor bringing it out in wheelbarrows we've been taking sand from one of the uh, rivers and taking that and bringing wheelbarrows in and then we've been taking the aged forest product the, the compost that we brought in that pile back there we've been taking that we mix it all together and we add our amendments and then now we have a bed to work with so it's a lot of wheelbarrow loads it's a lot of work so now we're on our third succession with a lot of these beds and the first succession is now getting to a point where it has to be replanted in some of these beds so we're doing kind of like a juggling act we're getting these these third successions ready while the first successions are coming to an end and I'll show you some examples so let's go let's go check some of these beds out Okay, so behind me here, this is our first succession of radishes. So radishes is one of those crops where you just pull it and uh, it doesn't regenerate itself, unfortunately. So you pull it and you got to plant some more seeds. So this is one of the beds, one of the successions that is dwindling down and we're going to have to replant stuff. So we've got market on Wednesday, so I'm going to probably clear out this bed come Wednesday and we'll have to plant some new stuff. So this is succession one. Let's look at the radish bed. I'm gonna show you the second one, and then I'm gonna show you the third one that I'm working on next. Okay, so we're in the rows, and I wanna show you the different succession. So that's the radishes we were just standing in front of. That's my first succession. And then what I typically do is I time it. And how I time these successions is when I see a true leaf. So, succession one, here's succession two. And you can see succession two is getting some true leaf growth. And now that it's got its true leaf, I'm getting my third succession done. And that's what I started on yesterday. So I got some seeds in the ground yesterday. We direct seed our radishes. So, succession two there, succession three. And that completes all three successions. So behind me here, we've got our second succession of spinach. And what I'm noticing is it's starting to bolt. And spinach, it doesn't like heat, so when it gets too hot, it starts to bolt. And so 
what we've decided to do was get rid of the spinach bed throw some stuff in there and then come back to it in the fall so the spinach I'm gonna phase out and I'm gonna phase in some crops that uh, I have noticed there's a demand for at the market so you want to meet your market demand and since this is new for us, we didn't really quite know what that market demand was and what crops people were gonna want at market. But as you go to market and people come by your booth and start asking for specific crops, you start to notice that not only do they like to cook food, but, but there's a demand for these crops. And instead of just continuing to grow the same old crops, why not grow some crops that people want to eat and want to purchase so uh, that's what we decided to do we decided to meet the market demand so you always want to have crops ready in the greenhouse so when you do pull stuff out you've got something to put in its place I'll give you an example we've got lettuce heads in soil blocks in the greenhouse ready to go in so the minute we cut a lettuce head we put uh, some new lettuce in its place and that's going to fill that spot up it's gonna protect the soil and prevent weeds from weeds from taking over so we even succession plan with our microgreens we do three trays every day so we're constantly having a flow of microgreens for every market and when we're cutting microgreens for market we've got another three trays that are gonna come up uh, you know in the following days that's it so I hope you enjoyed we'll see you guys on the next one Bye.